All right, one of the chips that was recommended I do a video on is a legendary 4066. Uh, back from the old Motorola 4000 series days, 4066. This one's a Motorola part, this is an MC1 4066. So sometimes they put a one in front of it. But in the old days, it was just 4, 4, 4066. CD 4066 or ah, other kinds of 4066s. Um, there are there are more modern 4066s. This is one. This is an 74HC 4066. So uh, the HC series continued to con uh, make the uh, the 4066. So what is a 4066? Okay, let's look at the data sheet over here. Uh, 4066 is a analog switch. So what is an analog switch? Well, you can think of it as a solid state relay. Okay, there are two contacts and then, a, and then a, a switch. And the switch is made out of FET transistors, so it's electronic. And um, uh, there's a lot of switching you can do with digital electronics, but they're always one direction, right? You can even just use like an AND gate as a switch. You know, if the other side's a zero, then the AND function won't allow a signal to pass through, but the, if one side it has a high, then, then, then it will pass through. So you can just use regular logic as a switch. But to have it bi-directional, be able to send signal in or signal out, is specific to a switch. And also, it's an analog switch, which means it doesn't have to have a high state or a low state. It can have any, any voltage at all, and it will go back and forth, just like a relay would. Now, uh, unlike a relay, these have a pretty bad on resistance, okay? These are going to have like a 50 ohm on resistance, and so it's not a very good switch for low ohmage. Um, it's, like I said, it's about 50 ohms, so if that's okay, then, then these, these types of switches are great. Um, the old part here, um, so here's like a, a diagram of it, not a great diagram of how a how a switch works. Here, this is a better diagram of how a switch works. Um, there's an input and an output, That's and then there's these two FETs that act as a switch. There's an N-type and a P-type. It allows you to have the, the, the voltage going this away or the voltage going this away. It works, it works in both polarities, and uh, then you'll have something like this. And then you can turn this thing on and off. It'll be an enable pin to turn this thing on or off. And it's usually at um, regular digital logic levels over here, either the CMOS, if it's a CMOS part, or TTL, if it's a TTL part, okay? So, uh, this particular chip, where the, uh, the 4066, okay, let's see what it says. It can operate from 2 to 6 volts, has a switch time of 18 nanoseconds, that's pretty quick, um, and that's because it's the HC version, okay? The old versions, the regular 4066, are going to be around 100 nanoseconds. They're going to be quite slow, but this one's pretty fast. This one is, um, this one's 18 nanoseconds switch time with the HC version. Um, yeah, on state resistance about 50 ohms. Um, you can use this thing for analog multiplexing, chopping, uh, all kinds of motor speed control, interesting, DC, DC converter, all kinds of stuff. Um, but this one is a quad switch, so this one has four four switches in, in, in one package, okay? So let's go ahead and turn one on just for fun. All right, so I have the switch hooked up here, and it's normally on. If I push the button, it turns it off. And um, I am connecting an ohm meter across the uh, switch. So we're getting about 34 ohms. And if I push the off switch, it goes to a high state, which is 171K ohms, something like that, or maybe higher. Um, the leakage of these things are pretty good and the crosstalk's pretty good. You can get all of the data off of the data sheet, but um, uh, the isolation is great between these things. It doesn't have a lot of uh, capacitance and stuff. The switches are pretty nice. Um, anyway, so that's that's the way it works. It is a switch, and it is bi-directional, so we can measure measure the ohmage in both ways. 33 ohms in that direction. If I go in this direction, it is 34 ohms. Same thing. Um, so uh, it works works in both. There we go. It's a yeah. So it's just kind of leakage. 
15 mega ohms. Yeah, it, it's it's very good. In the offset, it, it, it's very, very good. Anyway, so that is the uh, 4066. And I would recommend if you want to use a 4066 to get the uh, the HC part, the 74HC 4066. It's a much, much better part than the old days. Um, but even better, okay? The problem with these is going to be that the range of analog voltages you can send through this part are still be, going to be between zero and VCC. So if you have five volts hooked up to it. Really, you can only switch voltages that are between zero and five volts. It'd be nice to have an analog switch that actually worked with like op-amp circuits and stuff, you know, plus or minus 12 volts, things like that, okay? Well, fortunately, there are such devices. So um, we'll take a look at one here. This is a very old one. This is a, a DG201. So let's look at a, um, a data sheet on that part. <clears throat> All right, so this is a industry standard. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of parts in the DG series, DG201, 301, 401. There's a whole bunch of series of, uh, of analog devices that all kind of have similar pinouts and kind of have been standardized. Um, the DG201 is quite old. It says obsolete product. Please use the DG441. Uh, actually have one of those. Yeah, here's a, here's a DG441. Um, so it's a, a newer part. Um, this one is... Uh, switches, 250 nanoseconds. Um, now, the cool thing about this is, see, you, let's say you're using it with plus and minus 15 volts as the supply for this thing. Um, you, can, you can switch signals that are 28 volts peak to peak, right? That's pretty cool. Um, so you can put in uh, pretty, big, uh, pretty big signals into this thing. And here's the, uh, the quad nature of it. It's for... Uh, four, four in a package here. Okay, so let's let's hook this one up and uh, see how he how he does. All right, so we have the DG two hundred one in here. We have plus or minus uh, plus or minus twelve volts on it, and uh, we'll measure the contact resistance of this switch. And it's a little higher. It's uh, bouncing about bouncing around a bit here. Probably picking up some noise. Uh, but yeah, around around 100 ohms, and that's what the data sheet says. This one this one has a ohm uh, on resistance of about a, about 100 ohms, okay? But it has a much higher uh, uh, factor um, for the amount of um, a bigger a bigger voltage range, right? Now this is supposed to be compatible with a, uh, a 441, so let's 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 see if that's true. We'll pull out this part. We'll live switch it here right on camera. We'll take a 441 and uh, pop him in and see how he does. All right. And uh, better part, okay? It's, it's upgraded, right? It's only, it's only 40 ohms uh, on resistance. And uh, yeah, there you go. And if I, uh, if I disable, the, uh, disable the input here, let me pull the, uh, oops. I'm running out of hands here. Let me pull the input high so it will turn off. And uh, yeah, there we go. I think you can see it's in the mega ohm range. Every once in a while it pops up to like, you know, 19 mega ohms or something. But anyway, yeah, it's definitely off. Um, and then if we ground the input, uh, we turn it back on and it goes to uh, 50 ohms. So yeah, there you go. Anyway, so. Um, if you are going to put these in analog circuits, definitely go for the more modern parts, the DG400 parts, things like that. Uh, they'll, they'll, do you, they'll do you good. Okay, so um, how, would you, how would you really use these parts in a circuit? Okay, let's take a look at that. All right, well, there's a, there's a, there's a million and one ways to use a switch, right? You know, we have, we have a switch. So let's say that we have uh, an Arduino, okay? Arduino, and we are going to measure, uh, we're using, going to use the A to D on the Arduino, okay? And so we want to measure several things. We only want to use one pin of the Arduino, so we want to measure several things. So this is a quad, a quad switch, right? So we get, we get four of these things, okay? So we can wire them up like this and uh, measure four different things, depending on which one we close, right? If we want to measure this, you know, we want to measure A, B, C, or D, we'll just, we'll just close one of these, right? 
Um, you also can say, okay, well, I want to be, I want to check my offsets and stuff too. So one of these can be ground. So you can, uh, you can like measure your ground. Um, uh, there are there are fancy chips that have a whole bunch of multiplexers. Uh, I mean, a whole bunch of switches built in, and they're called multiplexers. And so you don't have to build them out of discrete switches. You can you can get one that's maybe a, a you know a, an eight-way multiplexer, and measure a bunch of things. I've I've used those before. You can also use them in um, some kind of analog circuit. Let's say you have um, oh, let's say you have some kind of circuit. You've got a, uh, you've got an inverting amplifier, okay, and um, let's say you've got a, um, let's see, you want to, all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to have a circuit like this. I'm going to have either a uh, gain of, let's say, gain of 10. So this is a time. So it's times 100. This this is times 100, and this is times one. Okay, and then that goes into the next stage. Okay, so next stage is over here. All right. Well, we could put an analog switch here. And we can put an analog switch here, right? And we can choose. Do we want to have a gain of 100 or do we want to have a gain of 1, right? And uh, we can control that with an Arduino. We can say, yeah, you, you get to choose, right? Or maybe you have a, 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 a inverting amplifier and a non-inverting amplifier. Do you want to have negative gain? Do you want to have positive gain, right? Um, or, um, I mean, there's just a thousand reasons. You can chop things. Um, you can switch things that maybe you don't want to uh, have noise get through the system. You want to kind of have an isolate and stuff. You can kind of use a poor man's isolation by using a FET switch uh, between the two circuits. Um, but yeah, uh, FET switches, yes, think about them. Um, like I said, they are bi-directional. Uh, there are other ways to do things unidirectional, but these things are bi-directional, allow the, allow the electrons to go forwards and backwards. Well, here's a circuit you could do. You could have it. Uh, you could have this circuit ramp up, right? It's ramping up, and then you can say, "Whoop!" You know, discharge. Whoom! And then it's going to ramp up again. And uh, you know, you might might want to have this as a sample and hold. Um, and you need to reset your sample and hold sometimes. Um, use use a FET switch. All right, so that was a quick introduction uh, to the 4066 and in general FET switches. Uh, they come in all sorts of different uh, voltages and configurations. You know, here's one that has uh, uh, normally open and normally closed in the same package. So that might be, that might be handy in some cases. So yeah, um, take a look at these. Uh, most of them that are interesting that I find are in the, in the GG series, GG 300, 400, 500 type of things. Uh, so yeah, take a look at the uh, take a look at the data sheets.